Chemistry lecture number 16, Dalton's Atomic Theory. Our modern view of the atom did not begin until John Dalton began his work in the early 19th century. Uh, before this time, people held the uh, views created by the ancient Greek philosophers. So for almost 2,000 years, people believed what the Greeks thought was the nature of matter. Empedocles uh, believed that matter was made of earth, air, fire, and water. And the ratio of these materials in a sample of matter determined the properties of matter. So, for example, a stone was mostly made of earth. Uh, a stone probably had a little bit of water, a little bit of fire, a little bit of air in it, but it was mostly earth. A rabbit was also made of uh, earth, air, uh, fire, and water, but it was mostly made of uh, earth and water. So, if the proportions of earth and water were greater, you're more likely to get a rabbit. Um, now, this explained why a rabbit has blood inside, because it's, you know, mostly water. Um, while a stone has little or no fluid, a uh, stone would be more earth than water. Now, there's a problem with Empedocles' idea. If you were to continuously cut a stone in half, all you get are smaller and smaller pieces of stone. Where's the air? Where's the fire and the water? Democritus, another Greek, uh, suggested that if you cut matter in half over and over, uh, you eventually reach an indestructible particle called an atom. Now, each substance is made of its own unique type of atom. A rock is made of rock atoms. Uh, wood is made out of wood atoms, and so on. Now, this would explain why you keep getting smaller and smaller pieces of stone if you keep cutting it in half. Now, Democritus also believed that one type of atom could not be changed into another type of atom. And thus, you can't change a stone atom into a wood atom. Now, before I go on, let me just sort of visually illustrate what we, Democritus and uh, Empedocles were talking about. Okay, so Empedocles believed that uh, matter was made of different proportions of earth, air, uh, water, and fire. But the problem was that uh, if you cut something in half and then cut it in half again, you just keep getting the same thing. So this is an apricot that I'm uh, cutting up. So I keep cutting this apricot in half, and I just keep getting smaller and smaller bits of apricot. You know, where's the fire? Where's the air? Where's the rest of the stuff? And that's the problem. Well, Democritus said that, well, if you just keep cutting it in half, eventually you're gonna get a smaller and smaller piece, and then you're gonna get a really tiny piece that can't be cut in half. And that tiny little piece that you can no longer cut in half, that's indestructible, is an atom. And the reason why you don't see uh, fire or air coming out of a rock is because uh, the rock is made of rock atoms. And for this apricot, I guess uh, Democritus would say that the apricot was made out of apricot atoms. That's why when you keep cutting it in half, you just keep getting smaller and smaller bits of apricot. You don't get any new uh, materials being formed. Okay. <clears throat> now, there was a flaw in Democritus' idea. If matter was made of atoms, what holds the atoms together? So why are these tiny little uh, clumps of uh, apricot atoms sticking together? What makes them stick together? How come they're not all falling apart? Well, Democritus didn't really have an answer. Now, Aristotle completely disagreed with Democritus. He said that matter was continuous. And this means that you can cut it in half continuously and never reach an indestructible particle. So that means, whoops, excuse me. So that means that I can continue cutting a piece of apricot in half forever and ever. Every time you cut it in half, there's always going to be a tiny little piece left over, and that tiny little piece can be cut in half, and the tiny little piece left over after that can be cut in half. You can just keep cutting it in half forever. You can cut it in half continuously, and that's what we mean by saying that uh, matter is continuous. Matter is not, uh, you don't reach a tiny little indivisible particle. You can just keep slicing it forever, and it'll get infinitely small. All right. Now, furthermore, Aristotle believed that the real elements of nature were hot, H, cold, C, wet, W, 
and dry, D. Now, when these four elements were paired in certain combinations, you would get earth, air, fire, and water. So, for example, fire was made out of hot and dry. So if you combine hot and dry essences, uh, you'll get fire. And earth was made of cold and dry. If you were to combine cold and dry essences, you'll end up with uh, dirt or earth. Aristotle also believed that earth, air, fire, and water could be transformed into each other by reducing one element and increasing another. So, here's fire that's made out of hot and dry, and we can turn fire into earth by decreasing the hot and increasing the cold, and you'll end up with earth. And then earth is made out of cold and dry, and so I can turn earth into water by decreasing the amount of dry and increasing the amount of wet. And then I can turn water into air, by um, decreasing the amount of cold and increasing the amount of hot. All right? And I guess if you boil water, I guess that's um, decreasing the cold and increasing the hot and turning the uh, water into a steam. That's uh, the argument there. And then with air, you can turn air back into fire just by decreasing the amount of wet and increasing the amount of dry essence. So overall, Aristotle believed that atoms uh, did not exist and one type of matter could transform into another type of matter. According to this belief, it would be possible to turn lead into gold. So if you can turn you know, fire into earth and earth into water, um, it just sort of led to the idea that you could transform one substance into another substance. Now, Aristotle's influence uh, predominated until Lavoisier proved the law of conservation of mass. So, quick review of the law of conservation of mass. Uh, Lavoisier proved that matter did not pop in out of nowhere and disappear, which is what would happen with Aristotle's thing if fire turns into earth and matter is popping in out of nowhere, or if earth is turning into fire, matter is disappearing. Lavoisier proved that that is not occurring. And the law of definite proportions and the law of multiple proportions gave further evidence that matter was made of atoms. Now, all of these laws suggested that tiny particles were simply moving from one location to another in chemical reactions. To explain these laws of matter, conservation of mass, law of definite proportions, and a law of multiple proportions, uh, an English chemist, uh, John Dalton, created a theory of matter. Here's Dalton's atomic theory. All elements are composed of tiny, indestructible particles called atoms. So we took that idea from Democritus. Atoms of the same element are identical. Atoms of different elements are not identical. For example, all oxygen atoms are the same, but an oxygen atom is different from a hydrogen atom. So all the oxygen atoms would, say, have the same shape, and they would have the same density. One oxygen atom would look exactly like another oxygen atom. But an oxygen atom would look different from a hydrogen atom. I guess they would have a different shape, maybe a different color, maybe a different density. Atoms in different, uh, of different elements can combine in whole number ratios, and this explains the law of definite multiple proportions. Chemical reactions occur when atoms are separated, joined, and rearranged. And this property explains the law of conservation of matter. The reason why uh, the matter you the ma the amount of mass you start with is equal to the amount of mass you end up with. It's just because the atoms in a chemical reaction are just coming together and falling apart. Uh, they're not appearing or disappearing. Atoms of one type of element cannot be changed into a different element. So you can't turn an oxygen atom into a hydrogen atom, or you can't turn lead atoms into gold atoms. And this explains why the alchemists failed to turn lead into gold. So the alchemists were sort of following uh, Aristotle's lead that you could turn one type of matter into another type of matter. But Dalton's uh, idea says, no, you can't do that. So overall, what we can say about Dalton is that uh, Dalton's work laid the foundations of modern chemistry. Uh, this is the, the atomic theory is of how matter interacts is, starts with Dalton. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 16, Dalton's Atomic Theory.